Hi dear medicals, good evening to all. Again, myself and our channel is back. So I hope that you are enjoying with our channel. I hope the discussions are useful to you. Please subscribe and share. Today we are going to the last session of delirium. So in the last session we are discussing about the delirium. No confusion now. We are okay. So we will go to the last session of delirium that is approach to a patient with delirium. So what are the steps we should know to evaluate a case of delirium. So our discussion starts with history taking and it ends with laboratory investigations. As we all know for all the diseases history taking is very 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 important. In delirium also it is very important but the thing is in case of delirium we cannot get the history from the patient is it not because the patient is in confusional state. So we should ask the bystander about the history of the patient. So we should remember three things while taking history of the patient in a case of delirium. One, whether the patient is having any underlying illness. Two, whether the patient is taking any medicines and three whether the duration of confusion is acute or chronic you understand so regarding the history taking three things are important one any illness of the patient two any medication history and three is yes whether the delirium is acute or chronic then second we should go for the general physical examination in general physical examination, the most important thing is we should look for any infection. How we can understand the patient is having infection? Yes, the most important thing is we should go for the temperature of the patient. Two, we should go for lymphadenopathy. So one is temperature and the second is lymphadenopathy. And if you are suspecting any infection in uh, pulmonary area or in lungs, Okay, so you should go for breath sounds. Then you are suspecting something in heart, you should go for cardiac murmurs. You are suspecting some infection in case of neurology or head, you go for neck stiffness. So these are the uh, things you have to identify or you have to evaluate in case of a delirium you are suspecting infection. Okay, next step. In the skin, you should go for cyanosis. As we all know, hypoxia is a cause of delirium. So you look for cyanosis 1. 2. You know that hepatic failure or hepatitis is a cause of delirium. You go for jaundice. And 3. The most important thing is delirium can be uh, seen or delirium is mostly seen in patients who are using drugs. So intravenous drug administration. You go for the marks of intravenous drug administration in skin. So these are the things you should see in general physical examination. So one is uh, what history taking, second is general physical examination, third is neurological examination. We all know that delirium is a symptom in neurology, is it not? So you should go for neurological examination, one is mini mental state examination. The most important thing is mini mental state examination. So we all know that the hallmark of delirium is what defective is yes, very good it is attention. So it is defective attention. So the most important thing we should see in mini mental state examination is attention. In attention we should go for digit span of the patient or memory span of the patient. So in digit span of the patient you ask the patient to repeat the row of numbers in random randomly you repeat the numbers. So you ask the patient to say suppose the physician is saying 1, 4, 6, 8, 2, 8, 9, 6 like that you say in a row. Physician should say in a row. The most important thing is physician should remember what he is saying. Okay. Otherwise we cannot say whether the patient is repeated correctly or not. So you should ask the patient to repeat the random numbers what you are saying to the patient. So normally a person can repeat up to 7 numbers. Normal digit span of a person is 7 numbers and if it is less than 7 or if it is less than 5 then the patient is suffering from 
confusion or the patient is having attention deficit you understand so this is how you look for the attention of the patient in case of mini mental state examination you look for other things also the most important thing is attention then you go for nervous system examination proper so we all know that patient with stroke patient with hemorrhage patient with meningitis is it not all will be having delirium and also patient with degenerative conditions like parkinsonism also will be having delirium so you go for the specific examinations according to the cause what you are suspecting so this is the first section so it includes history general physical examination and systemic examination of the nervous system i hope you understand then the most important thing is there is something known as confusion assessment method cam or it is also known as four ats that is four test it is a test which includes four words starting with a understand both are same Harrison is saying it is confusion assessment method and Davidson is saying it is 4A T's. Both are one and the same. So confusion assessment method CAM or 4A T's. That is test with four words starting in A. You understand? So we will go to the detail of this and I suppose uh, that most of you are hearing it for the first time. If it is not so, please forgive me. Okay. So, the first thing is confusion assessment method. First A is alertness. So, you see whether the patient is alert or not. If the patient is drowsy, you call the patient by name or you just call the patient by touching the shoulder. Okay. And make the patient alert. So, how will you grade this alertness? First, if the patient is alert, he is conscious. Then you give zero marks to the patient. You understand if the patient is alert zero marks if the patient is alert after 10 seconds again zero marks so 10 seconds the patient is in stupor state and suddenly he become alert within 10 seconds and if the patient is okay then again zero marks and third is if the patient is not at all alert that is if the patient is in comatose state or unconscious the mark is four okay so one if the patient is alert or alert within 10 seconds the mark is 0 and if the patient is unconscious or comatose the mark is 4 so this is the alert this is the grading of alertness in CAM second is you go for attention of the patient second A okay attention so what is attention we all know this delirium is defect mostly the hallmark of delirium is defect in attention so you ask the patient about the digit span you uh, ask the patient to repeat the numbers randomly or you ask the patient to say the months in a repeated manner that is starting from December, November, October ending up to January. You understand? So if the patient can say it uh, correctly up to 7 months in a uh, correct manner up to 7 months then the mark is 0. Okay. Then the mark is 0. If the patient is not able to say up to 7, if it is 5 or less than 7 or less than 5, then the mark is 1. And if the patient is not at all repeating, he is not at all repeating or he is not at all answering what you are saying, then the mark is 2. Understand? Correct 0, less than 7, 1. And if he is not at all repeating, the mark is 2. Then, third is acuteness of the complaint. Acuteness of the complaint. You ask the bystander whether the uh, delirium starts within two weeks and if it is more within 24 hours. So, if the bystander says yes, he is delirious, within, yes, he is in a confused state within two weeks, then the mark is four. And if the bystander says no, not within two weeks, then the mark is zero. So, Third A, that is acuteness. Fourth, fourth is also known as AMT4, abbreviated mental test 4. So, in that fourth section, you can ask four questions to the patient. 
You understand? You can ask four questions to the patient. It may be age, it may be name, it may be place, it may be birth date, whatever. It may be address, whatever you want. You can ask according to the knowledge of the, according to the educational level of the patient. If the patient answers all the four things, then the mark is zero. If the patient answers the four things, but one answer is wrong. Understand? One answer is wrong. Then the mark is one and if the patient answers all the things or he is not at all answering or if two or greater than two is wrong then the mark is two so these are the things we should look for in this confusion assessment method one is alertness second is acuteness third is attention and fourth is you can ask four questions that is abbreviated mental test four so how you are grading this delirium according to the CAM? You all know that, now you understand that it is a scoring method. Right? So, if the score, you can count all these answers and you can look for the marks for each section and you count all the marks of each section and if the score is greater than 4 or equal to 4, then the patient is suffering from delirium. Understand? 4 or equal to 4 equal to 4 or greater than 4 then the patient is suffering from delirium and if it is between 1 and 3 mark is between 1 and 3 there is no delirium but there is some cognitive impairment in that patient you understand so if the mark is greater than 4 or equal to 4 then there is uh, delirium if it is between 1 and 3, then there is some cognitive impairment. It is not necessarily delirium, but there is some cognitive impairment. And if the mark is 0, then what? Then uh, unlikely. Delirium is unlikely. But you should be very careful. In the fourth section, uh, in case of what? In the fourth section, that is acuteness. If the mark is 4, then you should consider delirium again. If the mark is 0, it is unlikely and if in the acuteness chapter, acuteness section, if the mark is 4, that is the uh, delirium starts within 2 weeks or the bystander says, no, I don't know. I am not sure whether the delirium is happening within 2 weeks, then you should not say that the patient is not delirious, you should suspect delirium again. You understand? This is confusion assessment method of 4A T's. You should look for alertness. You should look for attention. Then abbreviated mental test 4. And you should look for acuteness. And the very important thing is acuteness plays a major role in diagnosing delirium according to this confusion assessment method. Acuteness is very, very important. If the patient's bystander says, I don't know whether the delirium is within two weeks or what, I don't know, then you should suspect, definitely suspect delirium. Okay, so this is assessment method, confusion assessment method. Please be very careful. This is very, very important. Apart from the lab investigation, apart from this what uh, history, apart from the uh, general physical examination, we can diagnose delirium by this method. This is very, very important. Okay. Then we will go for the investigations of delirium. Regarding the investigations, now just you recall the cause of delirium. Let me see whether you are attentive or not or whether there are, whether you are having any confusion or not. So, we will recall the causes of delirium in order to study the investigations of delirium. So, so, so the first and foremost thing is infection. Okay. So, in infection, what are the usual things we will be looking in infection? Yes, directly we will be going for complete blood count. Then, we will be going for CRP. We will be going for urine analysis. If we are suspecting some infection in the pulmonary area, we will be going for chest x-ray. And if there is something related with heart, we can go for ECG. So, these are the things which are in connection with the infection. If you are suspecting a case of delirium due to infection, you should go for all these things. You understand? Second, metabolic disturbance metabolic disturbance the first and foremost thing which uh, you will be remembering is what diabetes yes you go for uh, blood sugar one then you can go for serum calcium you can go for sodium potassium urea ammonia 
then vitamin B12 etc. These are the things which is in association with metabolic causes. If you are suspecting delirium due to endocrine cause, then you can go for thyroid function test and also serum cortisol. Now, you are suspecting delirium due to some neurological causes. You can go for CT brain, you can go for MRI brain and also for lumbar puncture if you are suspecting some meningitis. That is delirium is due to meningitis. So, first you go for the cause of the delirium. I am concerned, I am saying with the investigations. Okay, you go for the cause, you uh, search for the cause of the delirium and accordingly you go for investigations rather than prescribing all the, rather than writing all the investigation to every patient, you go for the cause, you find out the cause of the delirium and you go for the investigations. Then regarding the management of the delirium, we all know that delirium is a acute confusional state. It is a very pathetic con uh, condition. As a patient is concerned, he is not aware of the surroundings, he is, he is not knowing what he is doing. So, supportive management is the most important general management. Bystanders or family members should support the patient. And medicinal management, there are so many medicines concerning with delirium in our repertory and materia medica. I am not going to the details of that. Now, again, uh, what? Delirium, we know about the definition of delirium, know about the pathophysiology, we discussed about the types, is it not? Now, we know how to evaluate a case of delirium. Hope you understand. If you are having any doubt, please put in the comment box. Definitely I will answer. Please subscribe, share. Happy day. Thank you so much.